Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Bastian Kuhn. I will show you today timber floor calcul calculations in RFEM 6 and my colleague Gerhard Rehm can introduce himself. Yeah, hello. Yeah, my name is Gerhard Rehm and I will be responsible for all your questions today and Bastian will explain you now how you can ask the questions. Exact. Thank you, Gerhard. Uh, so, in case you want to ask questions, uh, you have a, a register called questions. Uh, you can ask them there and my colleague will try to answer them all. And in case we cannot manage to answer all questions because there are so many, we will send you an email afterwards. So every question gets answered. I would like to introduce you to the exhibition at Digital Bau in two weeks at uh, wait we can also put the camera on yeah now it's completely uh, out uh, at uh, in cologne cologne is always a good place to be especially today as today the carnival starts in cologne but also in two weeks if you book a live demo uh, we can present you our software much more detailed and you will get a free ticket as a gift as well. All right. The content we want to show you today is modeling of a 2D system or not really modeling. I want to show you how to extract effects of a, of a 3D building into 2D regard or the load transfer points and then design it. Design timber for ultimate limit states serviceability limit state this includes vibration analysis um, then fire resistance design also for clt that's the the big big new feature we want to show you today that this is possible for surfaces and we want to bring that all into a printout report all right okay so then i will shut off the camera and jump into the program before we jump into the program and um, the project that i want to show you is also on our homepage under customer project it was was built last year the static analysis has been done by the engineering software uh, by the engineering company Pirmin Jung. Uh, they're using our software yeah that's the key and this is the building 13 stories the point we want to take a look on today is that there is, a, or what makes also the building quite interesting is that there's a smaller part that is uh, upon the, the bigger part. And we want to take a look on this story three here. So um, how can you do this? Now you can, first of all, make it with uh, model it 3D and regard all construction analyzes, uh, stages analyzes all this stuff in the 3D model, or you can model it 2D and then you have to connect each story via the option load transfer. And this is the option that I'm choosing here today. Today, I'm only looking for vertical deformation forces. I'm not looking for horizontal forces for the stiffening of the system. I want to do this in a separate webinar later this year. Today, only vertical, yeah, deflection and vibration. So wind load and earthquake, we will not consider here today. Um, yeah, as I said, I want to calculate that in a 2D structure, but with, but with 3D effects. Therefore, uh, just to give you an imagination of the structure, I just copied the top stories 4 to 13 in a separate position that I make a simplified load case there for the self-weight 4 kN per square meter and the life load 2.25 kN per square meter in each story. Gives you approximately a height of 25 meters of the story three, uh, 4 sorry, to 13. And now, 
how how can you get the force from the story 13 to the story 12 and so on therefore i created separate 2d positions here is yeah the story 4 and i summarize them all i want to show you that in the in the windows navigator so i have here story 4 story 5 story 6 7 8 9 10 up to 13 and connected the forces from the top story above the story 4 via the function here import support reactions because there i can say okay i'm connecting the story five here so the, the resulting forces from the story five into this position story four and then i can say okay in the story in the model with story five i have support nodes support lines and then i'm importing them to the current model right here and i can automatically tra transfer the load case from load case one to load case one in the new story and so on this is how it works um, i will put on the forces or the load and here you can see that i have point loads and line loads and if i activate it also i have also surface loads and this is yeah the, i told that already the four kilonewton per square meter for the self-weight and the 2.25 for the live load but we just want to concentrate for the load that's coming from the other stories uh, you see here that in this part i also defined nonlinear nodal support behavior it would also be possible to regard the settling or the construction stage via a spring constant in here all these points would be possible to be regarded and still transfer the load from one story to the other okay now when we go into the the position that we want to analyze today there today here i think it gets much clearer because i i know it can be quite confusing especially if you have not seen it before and it did not work so often with our or did not work with rfm6 uh, before um you see here i'm in the load case one self-wide also here i have when i activated the force in the first load case four kilonewton per square meter and 2.25 in the second load case these are the only two late load cases i want to analyze today i said it is a simplification today okay i think the easiest way to regard that or to understand what i'm doing here is to take a look at the point load so we have 1.68 here and 28 11 there now when we look to the previous model from the story four and take a look at the reaction in the load case one you see that I have 1.68 here, and if we turn it a little bit round, 28.11 here. So that really is the load transferred from this model into the other. And maybe we take also a look to the line load here. So 591 here, and then I think it should be enough. And uh, right here, whoops, you see, also 591 so yeah that fits the load is correctly transferred from uh, i would like to say story 13 to this part that we are analyzing here okay to the structure itself now that we have such a whole bunch of questions already um it's hard for me to follow them all um all right there but they there they are um i would like to show you also the dimension of this structure that we are analyzing today therefore i just 
shortly switch them on. It has a length of nearly 30 meter and a width of 12 meter. Um, I have several CLT plates in here. They are divided in an order that they also can be produced and brought to the assembly. That's, that's essential that this is possible. And they are connected in between those connecting points via screws and the screws in our software are modeled via line hinges. There's another webinar where I get into this much more detailed and also use a little bit of a script function in order to calculate them. But today I just took the force from the existing project or not the force, the spring constant over from the existing project. So in X and Y direction, I defined this spring in here. So that's why it's connected. The CLT plates themselves, they I generated with our add-on multi-layer surface. Maybe I go a little bit into the basics data here. So it will be this add-on multi-layer surface and I'm designing all this stuff in the add-on timber design. And when I defined this layer, I have a database here with all the producers that we are offering right now. So you see, it's even possible to have a producer from Switzerland, uh, maybe not this one, Schillinger, for example. And, but of course, uh, all the European producers. And if you want to design in America, or North America, Canada, then uh, you can also have producers from there. Um, right now here, I choose the plate from the company Derex. And this gives me a certain amount of stiffness. I have other options here to regard the failure of net sections and failure include contact surface. This is once again, more for the webinar of, of the stiffening system of for horizontal load, and I don't want to regard that today. But what I want to show you is that these layers here will generate a stiffness that we export into our FEM. So you see that this stiffness, if we're just looking for the top bending elements in here, you see that D11 is way more stiffer than D22. So the, the stiffness in X direction is higher than in Y. That's timber, right? obviously. There's nothing uh, so fancy and new. But now when I'm as a designer working and constructing it, you probably realized already the blue arrows here. It was in previous versions always hard to know how I, I'm assigning the, the, the plates. It's, if we look for the downstand beams that I have underneath those plates in here, you see that there's a downstand beam that is supporting this plate and this plate and this because of this connection point in here, it would not be possible to design it or well, economically to design it without this part um, that would, quite of hard, at least with screws, it, it can be a problem. And therefore this beam was arranged in here. It's a continuous beam from this point to this point. And now when you want to arrange the, the stiffness, you, you probably say, okay, I have to span in global X direction. That's, that's where I want to arrange my stiffness. So it's completely right what we did in here. And we can also have it much more detailed if you want to say, okay, I want to look at each layer. It just, I will just directly jump back to the thickness again, or maybe I can even have it here and then jump. Oh, that would be possible here. Um, so you see my first layer is oriented in, 30, uh, in zero degree. The third one is in zero degree direction and also the fifth one. And this is then the red arrow here. And the soft layers 
of the structure, which has less stiffness, is then this direction. So we, yeah, I don't want to get too detailed in it, but in a CLT plate, you have always the uh, just you are just regarding the stiffness in x direction and because of the uh, orientation of 0 and 90 degrees you still have stiffness in y direction you saw that in the stiffness matrix so what yeah what i actually wanted to show is that you will directly get very comfortable the stiffness direction and then as a constructor you can directly see okay here it's correct to orient it this way but here probably not because there i have supports completely here over the whole length and i also have supports here and there i definitely want to to change that how can you change this if you assign specific axis and define it here by 90 degree the whole composition is changed and you see it directly that the stiffness works all right that is the plates. Um, I also defined supports. Well, just uh, simplified also only vertical and not movable in X and Y direction because I think this is, as we are only looking for vertical courses and deformation, this is okay. I will generate the mesh just to show you another part what I made in this model, I certainly did take the whole load, the, for, once again, the example of the point load of load of 1.68 and defined it with a tiny little eccentricity to the support. In reality, when you are constructing this, you probably do not assign it to this node. What's the number? 439 you would probably assign it to the node for no 215 uh, but i did it this way and this will definitely give you a singularity which will never occur in the in the real life and either you can put the force directly to this node or if the distance gets bigger there's also the option to define surface result adjustment this is what i did in here all right um, yeah and i use this surface result adjustment wherever i have these problems but i want to show you with this the advantages of this 2d system in here uh, and when i have it in a 3d it would it could be yeah quite a lot of more more work to to regard it and also when you say okay a downstand beam here maybe I, I don't want one this would also be easier in this position in here okay we switch off the load again and come to the beams forces we did yeah i said it already the beam is supporting the plates because they have connection points in here otherwise it would not be possible to assemble them or to produce them and to assemble them both would not be possible and of course the engineer divided the beam in these connection points it is not possible uh, necessary with with fm6 to divide it but he did it and now how do you regard that as a continuous beam you will use the option set of a uh, member set sorry okay when we are already in member set we can directly take a look at the design types of this beam we don't want to look for stability today as we do not ha have any kind of buckling and we could also argument that for lateral torsional buckling, it does not play a role in here because we have constructive fixing on the top of it. So this will not occur. That brings us directly to the design configuration. Well, the ultimate limit state configuration is then also not so much to do. You can yeah, consider the system strength factor. That would be something probably quite relevant in case we 
uh, getting right to the borders of the loading with the members. Um, as I said, stability we do not do. Uh, and we have also the system strength factor for the surfaces. So it's always divided ultimate limit state, serviceability limit state into the definition of member and surfaces. It's more or less the same what you input in here. Fire resistance verification, uh, configuration, that is the new point, what I want to show you for surfaces. Therefore, I will not show that in the members right now. For the member, I want a required time of fire resistance of 60 minutes. And because it's covered on top by the plate, I skip that and say it's only burning left, right, and bottom and 60 minutes that's what i'm defining then what else can we define for the beams we can define a member support at the member start and end in this case here i said okay i have a support length of 30 centimeters which is quite long um possibly you want to reduce that later on and i'm using shear force reduction that i can always activate in case I have a shorter support length, I would maybe also want to reinforce the support via screws or with user-defined strengths, all this would be possible. And in order to regard the softwood, I can also increase the factor KC90 by the factor 1.5. All right, um, deformation is, Nothing I have to do much special on today. I'm just using the reference lengths. I will come to that when we look for the surfaces. And we will yeah, take this one here, this surface, and take a look for the design configurations again. The informations of the thickness I showed you already, yeah, just so that you know. Uh, what we are defining here, we have this reduction factor factors in here, which play a significant role for the design. That is all transferred into the stiffness of the structure. Okay, ultimate limit state, serviceability limit state, I showed already there's not much special to say to, but fire resistance. This is the main reason that we are doing this webinar here today for you, because we are really happy that we are able to regard fire resistance verification for CLT plates now, and we can regard it now correctly with correct reduced stiffness and all these points. I will come to that once we did the verification or have the verification ready. So I'm saying I want a required time of fire resistance with 90 minutes, which is quite long, and the default setting here is a non-heat glue, not the glue, but the glue or adhesion of cross-laminated timber, uh, which means this is the standard glue taken by the producers. So be aware to, to take this one. And uh, the burning rate that we have in here, we can also control that in the standard parameters. And it's probably quite interesting to take a look into that. Uh, the, the burning or the tearing rate is for cross laminated timber similar as for softwood 0.65 millimeter per minute. So you say 0.65 millimeter per the first 25 millimeter thickness. Then, when one part of the structure is burned or of the layer is burned, um, it ca and it comes into the area where where the glue the adhesion works for the in the connection of the two boards you have to nearly not nearly you have to double the rate or maybe there are maybe other rules where you even have to increase it so you say not 0 0.65 but you say in this area where the glue is you say 1.3 millimeter per, per minute so that's quite a lot and yeah, that's how it is regarded. In case one layer of the plate is burned nearly completely, maybe we take a look to the 
to the layers again. So if you say, okay, the bottom layer here uh, where, where I am with four centimeter thickness is burned completely, then of course it cannot, cannot bear any force or any stress anymore. And then there's also the rule to say, okay, when it's burned equal or less than three millimeters, it has to be completely skipped out of the design for the stiffness and the stress. So that's quite important. Okay, and we want non-heat adhesion. Um, the fire exposure, well, that's now quite similar to what we had for the members. On the top, I probably have some kind of planking or whatever. Uh, on the bottom, that is where I want to do or have the fire resistance verification. In case the bottom is also planked by, for example, gypsum or something else, you can calculate an insulation coefficient according the, yeah, once again, for example, the planking thickness, and then it's uh, the factor K2 should be less than one. Okay, but here today we say, okay, I'm working with this and we will try this one. Okay. This is the very important fire resistance and we will do the combination, do the design and then come definitely back to this configura configuration and take a look on it again. Deflection was uh, predefined with the maximum boundary length, which is all right in here. It's from this to this point, 4.8 meters, of course. And in the most of the cases you would want to have it, you can, oops, you can uh, also select a length. But you see here, this line is 4.8 meters, so you can really take it this way. Okay, and the service class is similar as for the downstand beams, one in this case. All right, this is the point and we will get to the combination. I hope I did not miss important stuff, but I don't think so. Okay, we're doing a combination according to Eurocode 5 with the German annex. Of course, a whole bunch of other annexes are possible and a whole bunch of standards for any other country is possible here. Okay, once again, we have only load case one and two for sake of simplification. Design situation is predefined with permanent for ultimate limit state. And in Germany, we have three combinations for serviceability limit state characteristic, which is the, which is the initial deformation of the structure and quasi permanent and characteristic quasi permanent with regardance of the creeping. So these two serviceability limit state verifications will also regard creeping. The creeping you can define in the basics with settings for timber structure. In case your structure gets nonlinear, you have to regard the creeping factors in stiffness modification, but we do not have this case here. And of course, we also want to do fire resistance verification. Therefore, once again, in Germany, it is recommended to use the accidental combination for fire with PC11, which means that your factor PC11 is put in front of the sum summation. Um, but of course, it's also possible to use the other summation where you have it in the summation of it. Okay. So this is the one we are using here and then we can do our combination. Yeah, quite nice, quite short, not much to combine when you have only two load cases. And then the only thing left to do is go into the timber design and say what you want to verify in here. So we want, once again, verify ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state. And here is uh, directly, correctly assigned the accidental fire. 
vibration we will do later on. I let the software now calculate because this gives me the opportunity to show you the printout report a little bit more detail. But maybe you already asked yourself, okay, it's nice that I can connect several models uh, within one model and have the forces from all of them. But how can I do the documentation of this? I need. I mean, I cannot say to the other engineers, uh, I have uh, magically uh, just have the forces somewhere here. You need, probably need the documentation for this. And that is what I want to show you during the, the calculation. And here I'm opening again the model with the story for. And here you have an option. Oh, wait, we have to get a little bit better. And this, so for example, what you definitely want to have in your documentation is the reaction force from the story and probably a whole bunch of other parts. But I don't have the aim to make you a complete printout report. I just want to show you how to connect several parts of the other model into this one model. Okay, so let's say we have the story four and once again, this is connected to story five, six, seven, eight, to all the other stories in here. And this is something I want to print to the clipboard. And then when I go into the printout report from the, the model where I'm working in on, I can say, okay, this is from story four, say, okay, and have it imported. And while it is loading, I can, for example, open another model, let's say this one, it's maybe not so interesting to have, but uh, let's say we want this with, with 25 meters and each story also into the, the global printout report. You can have that here. Of course, right now it's not over the whole front, so this is something, oops, you always can change via right click properties, maybe no comments, whatever. Um, so this is all possible. And one other point that is possible is to say, okay, uh, I don't want to have it from another model. I want to have PDFs and unify them into one big printout report. This is also possible in here. For example, I'm just yeah copy it, the load from the story 13, so the top story in here. And when I go once again, insert PDF and select this one here, go opening and yeah, for example, I say all pages, there is a whole bunch of options, uh, import it, and then I also have this PDF inside it. Okay, um, these are the options we have for the printout report. Yeah, once, yeah, maybe just, I don't want to take a too detailed look into the printout report, but of course, when you go into this, the settings of it, you, you have uh, you have all options to to for example regard the fire resistance configuration. Oh, sorry, this is in German. Oh, this was my fault. Um, once again, so we probably should change the language into English. Okay, but this is also possible. Uh, similar to the software, it's also possible to change the language. Uh, okay, yeah, that's because yeah. So here you see. Now it's there and we have the language in English. So it's also possible. Okay, so that we don't need. I think the calculation is now ready. Yes, so that's fine. Uh, oh, now this, ah, ah, now, ah, now it's loading all the points to the printout report. That was maybe not smartest way of doing it. I should have left that. Um, okay, but we can 
maybe wait a few seconds. Ah, it's, now it's ready. Okay, because it's now loading all the stuff from uh, into the printout report that I should have skipped. Okay, so the design of the structure is ready. And the overview at first says, yeah, not really um, a bigger problem. When we look for the design ratios on the member, that looks quite okay in here. We can also take a look on it graphically. Um, maybe we take a look at the biggest loading for ultimate limit state. This is the bending. Oh, we can also take a look at the compression, maybe just to have an example or an imagination. So you see, yeah, 50% loaded. The, the length is definitely too long that I choose in here. And maybe we can also increase this, uh, decrease the size of the section anyway. Um, okay, but here's the pressure support verification done. And you have an equation that you can put also to the printout report. Then uh, have a nice documentation of it. Okay, uh, serviceability limit state without the vibration is also not really a problem in here and fire resistance we also take the biggest loaded area or, or beam not area and because i think it's always interesting to see how this is done uh, so the original height was 32 centimeters with a width of 16 centimeters and because of my burning rates and my fire exposure on the sides it is reduced to 6.2 centimeters and a height of 27.1. And then the verification in this case for bending is done again with this reduced section. Okay, that's the beams. And now we will jump to the surfaces. And here you see already, ooh, the fire resistance that is not really so nice looking in here. I mean, it's only a small part of the structure. Oh, hold on. We will get the graphics on again because I skipped that. That can, there can also be defined an average region or um, a surface result adjustment, just like I did in this part here. That would definitely be possible. And I say 20, 30% is something that is probably possible uh, to, to have it, at least if it's such a, a tiny high peak in here it's something you can always do but i want to try something different in here before we do that we take also a look to the other loadings inside here um yeah the shear is uh, for the punching through area is design giving in here on on this part that's uh, the usual punching through area what you want to take a look on and we can maybe also take a look at the stress over the whole section because I think that's always nice to see and to see for the bending, okay, how the stress is transferred into each layer of our section or our surface. Okay, serviceability, okay, that's just deflection. We can take a look also on the details, but I want to show you that via the vibration analysis later on. Um, you see, it's just that we take the limit deformation of 60 millimeter and use this for dividing the existing deformation in this serviceability state. And that brings us to the fire resistance where we have this high overloading. Okay, there it's quite interesting when we look for the result diagram that I showed you for the ultimate limit state before because now you see our intelligence behind it. Um, you see because of the burning the fifth and the fourth layer is burned completely and this is not only for the stress but also for the stiffness. The stiffness matrix that I showed is reduced for the load cam combination 9 and 10 and yeah you see of course, now I have only one layer in here 
uh, taking stress because this other one has in this direction where I'm looking on the stiffness zero. So that's, yeah, of course, the worst case that could happen. So 90 minutes with this glue that I'm using here, it will never work, I think. Um, so that's just, just quite too ambitious what I tried. Um, we nevertheless, before we change something, we will use it again in here and take a look at the charring depths inside. So layer five, I told that already, it is, is burned completely, of course, by 90 minutes, there's nothing to talk about. But the layer four can be quite interesting because you see, I usually had a remaining thickness of the layer of two millimeters, but because of this rule that I just showed you, it is burned completely now. It has no more bearing capacity. So it's defined to zero. Okay, yeah, you probably expected what I'm doing now um, because I uh, introduced that long time. Um, the easiest way to increase this now is to use a heat proof adhesion of cross laminated layers because now I don't have to double the burning rates. And you saw it probably that it tells me that it needs to delete the combination nine and 10. Why is this necessary? Because the stiffness in the combination nine and 10 is also reduced by this new sharing rate. So we have to, to export the stiffness matrix for this combination back again into the program, get the inner forces and calculate it again. And hopefully now we cross our fingers, uh, we hope that it will work. Um, okay, it should usually not take that long because we only have these two combinations and also for the, the timber design or the timber verification, it's just in, in brackets, <laughs> just the fire resistance where we need to do the stress analysis again. Still, I know there are a lot of parts to be verified. Yeah, and there we are already. I'm just scrolling a little bit to the questions, but Gerhard, yeah, he answered them all. Um, and there's not really much questions coming doubled. Um, what can we take a separate look on? No, I can't really see it. Okay, so yeah, but there we have it. I would have to shown something else, but now we have the results. And then we directly jump into the surfaces and look to the fire resistance and yeah, perfect. You see, uh, I yeah like nearly have 100% less loading on the structure because uh, yeah, just by this better glue that I'm using in here. And now we can also take a look to this graphics again. And now you see it already in the graphic, 14.5 millimeters do remain and yeah, when we take a look at the stress, yeah, of course, this bottom layer here just gives me so much load, more load bearing capacity that it's yeah, just the smartest, for me, the smartest way to do it. Um, in the details, you will definitely see the same. In here, when you go to charring depths and then you see here that this is still working. So yeah, once again, um, this is really, really a big jump. I don't know a software out there that is calculating 2D surface elements, um, assigning a fire resistance verification by also reducing the stiffness. I mean, there's probably some softwares that will reduce the, or have to reduce section, but they will not reduce the stiffness. So. And it's quite so important if you look for the effects that it has in here. So that is what we are yeah, very proud of that we have it in our software now and I think yeah, it's one of the best things you can 
have. Okay, um, this and now uh, was only missing the vibration analysis. Yeah, I want to show you the simplified vibration analysis at a first step. Therefore, I'm shutting off the combination wizard and will just define one more additional design situation for vibration, of course, vibration and F in load combination. Also one more load case that I'm assigning to this and have 100% of the self weight and 30% of the life load, right? And yeah, I don't think you want to see the calculation again for all the other objects to design. And therefore I'm just doing the simplified vibration analysis again. You see now I have only one combination and only deflection that I'm showing in here. So that would be quite good and quick. That's the point what I want to have in here. Um, you know, the simplified vibration analysis is similar to the SLS verification with uh, it's looking where is the biggest deformation and this is divided then by the limit deformation of five millimeter. I showed it to you in the configuration settings and you see everything's red. That's not nice. Uh, if you look for the members, there's not really a problem in here, but of course for the surfaces here in this area and in this area, you have the biggest overloading. Uh, you have 44, 8% overloading of it. Now, how can you regard that? Um, there are several ways how to, die, to do this. What we here in Germany do the most of the time is to do the analysis by so-called Ham Richter. Um, what does that mean? It means that we are calculating the frequencies of the structure. Therefore, I'm copying or assigning a new load case and give it the analysis type modal analysis and import the load case one as a mass in here. And I need another load case for the stiffness criteria. This is the way how this is done. Um, I will just show you what it means. So when we look for the static analysis in the load case three, we will calculate the frequency or the heart rates of the structure. And now in this method is a rule that when you are in independent structures, you should be above a heart rate of eight. And when you are in dependent areas, so when your own family is uh, introducing the frequency, you should be over six heart. Okay, so that worked for the second rule, but not for the first one. Okay, so you have two ways to do it. You can either get it stiffer, but it's not really in this problematic part. It's, it's more in this part here where you can try to arrange something. But if you argue, okay, I have maybe a dependent area here, it is fulfilled at here. At least it is not 44.8% overloaded. And now the second criteria is that uh, it's the stiffness criteria. Therefore, in the maximal deformed part, you have to define a force, a single force of two, two kilonewton, and it should be below the deformation level of one millimeter. And when this is fulfilled, your verification is done. Well, it requires that you have an option to calculate the frequency rate. Uh, rate and um, this method is even more or it can be even more sophisticated at what I'm showing in here and it would also be possible to analyze this with our software 
but there you have then to define um, a vibration on the structure and see how the damping in the structure works. So, but as with this rules, we are below the level of one millimeter, you can agree or you can argue that the vibration is fulfilled and that it is okay. Just as an option, because yeah, the simplified approach is really simplified. That's in the nature of such things. Okay, then I see everything's answered. That's always good. And we will come back to the presentation because Gerhard wants to tell you a little bit about new things upcoming. I already announced a little bit an upcoming webinar for stiffening and Gerhard also has something in plan what, what he will do in future. Okay, but Gerhard, the stage is yours. Thank you, Bastian, and thank you for the webinar. Yeah, so at the end, I wanna talk about new features which we have implemented in the last, yeah, let's say weeks. So last week we have released the fire design for surfaces. So it's not only for CLT, but for all kind of surfaces for um, Eurocode design and for design according to the code from Switzerland, the CR265. Yeah, and yeah, we pre or I will prepare a webinar especially based on the fire design, but I'm I don't have a date yet, so maybe end of March or April or something. Okay, so the next few a feature was no, sorry, oh, sorry you, yeah, you are sorry, too fast. Quick, sorry, yeah, no, because yeah, you said next, sorry. yeah. <laughs> and no, no, the next feature uh, was we have released a few weeks ago. Um, is the profile sections um, according to our material database also for the code from Switzerland. And this week we have released uh, the design of, yeah, user defined cross sections created by our section, our standalone add on. So now you're also able to design these cross sections for Eurocode and SIA code. Yeah. Okay, Bastian, next slide. Okay. Okay, here we talk about future features. So these are the features what we're working on. Um, so we will release maybe next Monday or the Monday after next Monday, we will release yeah semi-rigid links. So at the moment we have the rigid links, but in a few days you will be able to assign also line hinges inside the rigid links, which is also good. Yeah, for example, for composite beams and so on. So you can connect them or you can connect now uh, different or multiple members. Yeah, we are the rigid links. Um, okay, then the NTC. So for our Italian customer, yeah, we are close to release the NTC code. Um, let's see, maybe a few weeks more than it's finished. Um, that's a national code from, yeah, from Italy. Yeah, we wanna try to extend the design supports for tapered and notches. But yeah, this uh, feature will take a, a few weeks more, I guess. So we haven't started, but uh, it's quite asked frequently. Yeah, and the next big step is, uh, yeah, we plan to release a, yeah, a new surface type to model timber frame walls. Yeah, so you can see it here on the bottom right side. Um, we, will, we will release it step by step. So in the beginning, you can only model or you can only um, yeah, consider it for the stiffness. So there is no design done, but uh, and only for simple um, surface shapes. But um, yeah, we will release uh, a feature, another feature step by step. So, but this will, this will take at least a few weeks or at least months, I guess. Yeah, so this is the forecast for the next year, I would say, and yeah, let's see but just to inform you and hopefully it will help you. Okay, Bastian, then I want to say thank you and goodbye from my side. Yeah, all right. Yeah, uh, yeah. I would like to, to close the webinar and once again invite you to the Digital Bau in two weeks or in less than two weeks in Cologne. Uh, book your live demo there and maybe 
Gerhard, no, go ahead, not, but uh, me and the other colleagues can show you something. Uh, in case you cannot attend to the exhibition, book your free online appointment, contact our sales team. We have free online services all on our homepage. The models to download, I showed you FAQs and the Geo Zone tool is there, for example. We are in the social media. Try license in case you did not do not use the software, just download it there and have a 90 day free trial of it. <clears throat> okay, thank you and have a nice day.